Can I do that? Ooh. Oh, wait, no. Ooh, bow. I'm Madonna. Madonna. Hi, guys. Today's video was a special request by you guys, the viewers. You asked me for help with double tonguing. Double tonguing is a form of articulation that allows the performer greater speed than the single articulation of the taw. In order to articulate the double tongue, the performer will use either the tucka tucka or the dugga dugga. Which one do I prefer? Both. I actually use the tucka tucka for accented passages and the dugga dugga for the softer, more pianissimo, delicate passages. Here are my tips and tricks to help you build up your double tongue. For my beginners, I like them to practice everything triple forte, as loud as possible when learning how to double tongue. This is because the tongue is going to float on the air. You have the initial impact of the ta, and then you have the cut of the back of the tongue with a ka. So you have ta, ka, ta, ka. The tongue will float on the air. If there isn't enough air speed and pressure behind it, the tongue has a more challenging time and speed is slow to build up. So for beginners, practice everything as loud as possible. If you're looking for a piece to help you with this, the Mildy Concert Study number four is great. It has repeated notes to help you get that tucka tucka in different octave ranges. Once you've mastered playing everything as loud as possible and you are building speed with your double tongue, I like to switch to more melodic excerpts, such as the Beethoven Symphony No. 4, or recently I just played his fourth piano concerto, which also has a lot of delicate double tonguing that switches throughout various notes. For these double tonguing excerpts, what I like to do is first off practice them all slurred. By practicing them slurred, I train the air and the air speed for the different registers. Slow for the low register, fast for the tenor register. By training the air first, then I can go back and add in the double tongue at a slower speed and the only thing I'm focusing on is the double tongue rather than trying to focus on the air and the double tongue at the same time. I like to start at a slower speed, push faster to my breaking point and then go back to where I know it can be absolutely great and then continue to build speed over time. Gaining speed is the goal with double tongue. One of the fastest ways to build speed for me is to make sure that I'm not playing on a reed that is a tree. This means that I have removed all of the bark, that heavy golden cane, and I play on a light, less resistant reed. I have found that when I start playing on a reed that is a blank versus a finished reed, my double tongue is between 10 to 15 metronomic clicks different. This is because if the reed is too heavy, there's resistance and it's not getting that vibration of the air through it, and it's going to take a harder ta and ka or da and ga to create that cut in sound. If the reed is as light as possible, you'll find that there's less resistance and the tongue and the air can move more freely. My favorite excerpt to test this out on is Mozart's Marriage of Figaro. The very quiet opening at the start of this excerpt allows me to make sure that the reed has great response and then also it has the double tonguing on the D's and the A's later so that I can test the speed of the response. For my friends that are musicians on the road, I'd like to remind you that the tongue is a muscle and just like all muscles, if you go to the gym regularly and you train, you will build up speed. So another key element is to make sure that you're practicing regularly. This doesn't mean that you have to have the instrument in your hands. I, myself, and my friends like to practice keeping their double tongue in shape in the car with the syllables and the air behind it. So even if you can't get to your instrument, you can still make sure that you're training and you don't lose any of that speed because you couldn't get to a practice room. 
Okay guys, I hope you found this helpful and thank you so much for the request. If you have other requests, be sure to leave me a comment down below and I will get to filming whatever you'd like to see next. If you enjoyed this, be sure to give it a thumbs up and if you want to make sure that you never miss a future video, be sure to click that subscribe button. I will see you guys next time. Bye! Our studio at JSU has had a great year of fundraising and there is nothing better than getting to spend some of our money on those much needed items. So here's what we've been buying.